the story of East is one of the most ambitious experiment science stories. Started in 2006 when the Federation of uh, the Austrian Industry received the so called Harari Kübler Marke Report, providing a concept how to establish a new research institute committed to excellence in curiosity driven research here in Austria. Today we celebrate the 10th anniversary of the existence of this report. For investments in science, we have to look at the time scale from a generation's perspective. So being responsible for future generation means you have always to think about the future. Uh, and always to look at what the future could be like. So the things a research institute has to do, which aspires to world leadership, but also which a university has to do, which wants to be a leading research university, is first off, number one, to make contributions significant contributions uh, to global, to themes of global importance. Point number two is to identify and to develop new themes of global importance. And number three is a very practical thing that, of course, you have to harmonize your portfolio with your stakeholders and with your funders. The fundamental question that has to be added is, what makes creative research? L the other thing, attraction of talents. University is all a question about talents, about the brains that you can attract. In this sense, the US you know, has a, a huge advantage. Attract the best graduate students, but also the young faculty with the 10-year tracks, but also leadership position. We tend to forget. You know, people want to become dean, provost, presidents of institution. Funding, endowment, we don't have to say, you know, the kind of endowment that the Harvard's had with over 30 billion, overhead on research, which is very important, and that pays, really carries a lot of the cost, and tuition. This is a big debate that, you know, is going on today in Europe. For a good institute to be successful, funding has to be versatile. It has to come from several sources. That's the big, single, most important secret of the private American universities, and also of Oxford and Cambridge. Government support, private philanthropy, research grants, industry, alumni, and a variety of other things. It is critical that you take the best because the top people attempt to hire top people or even people that are better than themselves, whereas mediocre people hire mediocrity or even worse than mediocrity. Students are the future and are critical to any successful research enterprise. In choosing students, universities must seek out the most curious, independent-minded young minds. Young people must be given the chance to express individuality, creativity, and to develop leadership earlier in their careers. The drive that the young provide in a university, and of course the demands they have to us, can be a very good mo engine to really make the faculty, make the university administration look out and see where are their themes of global importance which are emerging, which we should pick up and try and develop if we can do so at home. Nevertheless, um, looking for excellent young people means, in my opinion, to look for a quality that I would like to call competent rebels. I would like to see young people who are rebels in the sense that they question the received wisdom and scientific knowledge is always preliminary certain knowledge. It will be replaced, it will be expanded, it will be complemented by new knowledge that will be produced. The, uh, politicians, uh, high trust means you have to trust the institution you fund. Give them the money that you can afford and let the institute run the high trust funding within the institute. By example, Oist Graduate University is supported 95% by our government subsidy funds. Nonetheless, the government does not interfere in management decisions like governance, appointments, assignments, 
salaries, decisions regarding tenure, who or how we recruit students, and the such. To allow serendipity, this very powerful alley of every research and every scientific work, serendipity meaning you come across, you encounter, you find a phenomenon that you have not been looking for, but, and this is the second important uh, side to it, you recognize its significance. And if people are asking why it took it 50, nearly 50 years to discover the famous Higgs boson, why, it took it why did it take 100 years to find the gravitational waves? Because the technologies were not there. They had to be developed. And the research itself drove these technologies. You need a vibrant, vibrant environment. And if you don't have it, you have to take measures to install it or likewise invite it. But converging technologies automatically means you have to install interfaces between different disciplines. You have to make people work together, talk together, have a coffee a room in which they have to meet. This is the only coffee room there is. This is a critical element to bring together people from the various disciplines. You need to provide, obviously, the best working conditions possible. And working conditions have um, a space component and they have a temporal component. Space component means you provide them with a nice working environment, the facilities are there, the campus is beautiful, etc. But it also means the space to communicate with others, to make it almost obligatory from an architectural point of view and from a social organizational point of view, that you have to run into each other that you start discussing things that you have not intended to discuss with people you meet. And again, this is the unexpected that comes in, in the kind of personal encounters. I want to remind you on the mission of research institutions. What is the mission of research institutions? First of all, of course, it's research, that the raison d'etre. You want to push back the frontiers of knowledge. That's clear, that's number one. But you need to do that, in order to do that, you need innovation, innovative technologies. You have to develop new cutting edge technologies in order to perform your, uh, your research. And you need educated and trained scientists and engineers. So you need education and training of scientists and engineers of tomorrow. That's very, very important. And last but not least, you should not forget outreach. You have to take the society with you. I would like to recommend a certain type of schizophrenia for a scientific institute. It has to be as international as possible and as national as possible. International in the basic research. There is nothing Austrian or Swiss or Israeli or Japanese about basic research. Any new discovery in science is universal. That's truly international, should be done by people of all nations, should be done by the only international language. I mean, there's no question about it. But if you are supported generously by your taxpayers, you should give something back to your country, or environment, or region. And that can be done only in two ways. Education and touching the society. And when I say education, I mean from kindergarten to the age of 100, and everything in between. Bringing science to the public, acquainting the public, exciting the public explaining the importance of it, uh, changing the high school and junior high school and elementary school programs, helping the teachers, creating competitions, a hundred different things. And incidentally, at Weizmann, we have an enormously wide program of such things for 50 years now. That's one thing you return to society. The other thing you return to society is technology transfer, which leads to productivity, to export, to creating jobs, and that is the other thing that we have succeeded in doing at Weizmann in a tremendous way. We are the only basic research institute in the world which earns every year more royalty than its entire budget. You should look beyond your borders, beyond your boundaries. It has to be national and international. Today's world is global, and the people have to learn that. This institution here, for me, represents the openness of Austria towards the world. 
It has opened up a window which is quite a unique window to look at this vast scientific, global scientific landscape that we now have. We are a tiny spot on this global scientific landscape. Nevertheless, it's one that is very attractive and I wish you and us all that the attractiveness may continue to increase. From the inception to the realization of this project, I think Hubert Markel would have been proud today. And it's sad that he cannot be with us. I mean, sound voice the band.